So submarines are definitely here to stay. Today we're taking a look at the I-56, kind of the Japanese tier eight premium submarine. It's kind of an interesting one out of all the subs I've played. This one seems like quite a bit of fun because you actually have a main gun. And gunboats are something I enjoy a lot, as you guys know, tend to prefer them over torp builds. But what I really want to talk about today is the addition of submarines and that I kind of suck with them. If I'm being honest with you guys, I'm pretty bad. I'm easily, I would say, super Unicum in destroyers, cruisers, battleships. I don't find those classes particularly difficult to play anymore because I've played an absolute ton of them and kind of figured them out. Submarines, I just decided that I didn't like after a lot of the earlier testing that was done on the test server and then some of the early access stuff. So I haven't really played them much recently or at all, and I found them quite boring. One of the big issues was you didn't have a gun. You didn't have the ability to engage in some of the more action-packed areas of the game. And I found that a little bit boring, so I just didn't end up playing them. So in the coming months, I'm actually going to try and learn how to play submarines really well. And maybe even carriers, because that's another class that I've kind of just decided that I don't like playing. Because again, it feels a little bit boring and I'd rather play something else. That's how I felt in the past. But with subs being fully added in, I figure I should probably give them a shot. And that way I can give a more informed opinion on how these subs are doing. And maybe I can learn actually how to counter them a little better just by playing them. I found myself getting a lot better at this game when I first started, when I branched away from just playing battleships. That's all I did at the beginning was just play the Japanese and the American battleships and nothing else. As soon as I branched out into playing cruisers and destroyers, even if I sucked at them at the beginning, I started to learn the patterns that a lot of cruisers and destroyers wanted to take, and it helped me play battleships better. And I became much better at torping battleships simply because I knew what battleship players thought like. So maybe I can apply that same logic to learning how to counter subs by learning how to play subs really well as well. So this one in particular, this one is a little different since we have really strong normal torps. Notice I'm not pinging here. These are really powerful normal torpedoes. And I like that design because you're not constantly pinging and being annoying with that damage control usage. And it rewards you for torping someone just like a normal DD would be. So that's kind of why I actually have been enjoying this one. Been playing the other, the Russian submarine that's premium as well. And I actually managed to get the tier eight German sub out of one of those boxes that can be found in the armory for free XP, I believe. And yeah, these storms are powerful. <laughs> They're very, very powerful. Much like a Japanese destroyer is rewarded for flanking and getting off that perfect torpedo strike, so is the Japanese sub, or so it seems. It's really, really slow underwater, as you can see, and has very little battery charge time. I kind of like that. You can't just sit underwater and speed away at the speed of light. It's a very interesting ship to play compared to some of the other subs, at least so far is what I've been finding now that I'm actually starting to engage with them more. I'm sure we all saw that ridiculous dev post a couple of days ago. I spent over an hour going over it on stream, kind of laughing at it, and then eventually I felt pretty sad by the end of it, because all it really amounted to, in my opinion, is Wargaming telling us why subs are going to stay in the game, and that all of our concerns don't really matter. They just kind of hand waved them all away. Subs are here to stay. If you don't like it, leave and get used to it, because this is how it's going to be in the future. That's at least the vibe I got from that, uh, that dev blog, which is kind of sad to see, because there's some very valid criticism when regarding submarines in this game. And it's been kind of just waved away with, oh, people aren't used to change, that's why they're upset. And that was a little bit disappointing to see. And oftentimes the charts and graphs they were showing were very cherry picked. And some of the metrics and feedback that they used were also very, very cherry picked. I think the interesting one there was taking into account surveys done in 11.8, very long time after submarines were first introduced into early access testing, not early access, sorry, into testing, rentals, that kind of thing. And then they only took into account how people thought about subs based on their play rate only in update 11.8. That's what the survey was saying. So a lot of people who 
tested subs earlier, tried out subs earlier, and decided they didn't like them. And, you know, there hasn't been many changes. Took the survey, said they don't like them, and that data was all thrown out because they didn't end up playing subs in 11.8. They had played them earlier. And so they only really took into account players who had played subs a little bit in 11.8. And most of those were a little more positive because... As you can guess, they probably enjoyed subs a little bit more if they were still playing them so many months after that earlier test. Oh man, I gotta say, I'm really sad submarines are fully in the game. It feels like just another protected class, like the carriers. There's just so many gimmicks when it comes to them. I just don't understand. Like the Ohotnik and I think the Leon not having anti-submarine warfare at all. And the reason given was historical accuracy. And then we have submarines with, like, 1980s homing missile torpedoes. And I just don't see the historical accuracy argument working when you use it for when it suits you, and then you just hand wave it away and say, arcade battle, arcade game, as soon as it suits you the other way. It seems a very, like, an odd position to take, and that's why I wasn't really very happy with that dev blog. I don't want to go over it all here. That's why I'm just kind of summing up my thoughts on it as we watch me try and probably fail when it comes to playing a submarine. I just found that the dev blog was just constantly using whatever convenient excuse could come up to deal with whatever question they were trying to just push away. So let me know what you think in the comments below about that dev blog, about subs being added. And honestly, if you have some tips, if you've played subs a lot and you're good at them, let me know. Let me know. I'm actually going to try and learn how to play these things. And hopefully that way I can understand how to deal with them a little bit better. I hope that we can get to a point where submarines aren't as toxic to play against and they don't just prevent every anybody from pushing in. But I can't really see us getting to that point because it's just baked into their fundamental role right now. And as we've seen over the last three years, Wargaming hasn't really changed the way subs play at all. They're just still the same thing balanced a little bit to try and look okay when it comes to win rate based on account win rate. That's really the only metric that they've managed to kind of balance out, and even then it's a little bit questionable. Personally, I'd love to see more normal torps, less pinging, that kind of thing. It could be quite interesting. And deck guns. I think deck guns are cool, although the DPM on this one might be a little bit too high. Uh, while I was playing it in the stream, somebody mentioned that it outguns an Ognavoy stock. So. I'm not sure if that's exactly true, I didn't actually go look it up, but the SAP DPM here is actually pretty insane. So if you did manage to get this one on an early loot box roll, uh, it's a pretty interesting one to play, even if you're not interested in subs. The normal torps are fun, feels a lot more like a DD, and you actually have a gun to maybe do something with. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting ship for a submarine, I should say. Not that submarines are particularly interesting. Another thing mentioned in the dev blog was that shotgunning was a pretty rare thing to happen. And I don't know, man. It seems like as a submarine, it's very easy to get caught bow in overextending. And then all you do is just dip under the water, go undetected. You can't really turn away in time, it seems like, at least with this one. So then what do I do? I just full commit to the YOLO, the shotgun. And it's gonna work out because shotgunning isn't all that hard right now. It's just too easy. This poor Kronstadt pushing in. I mean, my team's winning this game anyway, so it's not really tipping the tide of battle, but shotgunning's not hard, man. Uh, they made it out to be like it was difficult. The other weird thing, of course, is that I can't spot the enemy sub. He finally gets spotted now because he surfaced, he ran out of battery, but it's so awkward not having that two kilometer detect I don't understand it at all because there's no interaction between sub players. I was saying on the stream, like, it seems like two damage farmers high-fiving each other on the gravel road as they go to tend to their crops. That's, that's what it seems like the interaction is between submarines on one team to another. There's really not much engagement until they run out of battery, forced to surface, and then they can kind of fight up top. So that's kind of my initial thoughts on this sub thing finally being released. Again, let me know what you think in the comments down below. I do apologize if this video was a little more negative. I'm gonna try and keep things a little bit positive when it comes to this game and submarines and carriers, because at the end of the day, I still really enjoy playing this game. 
I was gone for around a week. I was dog sitting for my parents while they went on a holiday. And I didn't really have access to playing the game. Um, I was back on the old internet that was Starlink, which is not so good. So I didn't play the game for about a week, and I was very excited to get back. And I still really like this game, guys. I gotta say, I really like it. I just don't like the direction it's going in. And I hope that we as a community will be heard by upper management in Wargaming, and we can change things or turn things around. Keep in mind, I don't blame devs or community managers at all. I really do think this is an upper management type of thing. So thank you for watching this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.